In this video, I'm going to show you how to update your HD0 firmware. I'll show you how to get the correct firmware files, and then I'll show you how to update the HD0 receiver and the VTXs. Let's get started. You're going to need your HD0 receiver, VTX, a micro SD card, the HD0 firmware update cable, and a Windows, Mac, or Linux computer. First, you'll need to download the latest firmware. You should always get the firmware from the HD0 website, which I'll link in the description below. On the download page of the site, you should get the latest version of the firmware and download the zip file to your computer. That zip file contains separate firmware files for each type of HD0 receiver and VTX. Next, you'll need to get the micro SD card from your receiver. If you haven't chosen a card yet, your safest bet is to use a 32GB Class 10 micro SD card, although some users have been successful with larger cards. You'll need to format the card as FAT32. You can do that with the computer, but you can also just do it from the receiver itself. To do that, you'd enter the menu by holding the jog wheel to the left until the menu appears. Then you'd select the format option and click the wheel in to format the card. Once you have the card formatted properly, you can load the firmware onto the card. You'll need to start by picking the correct firmware for the HD0 device you're updating. We'll be starting with the receiver, so you'll want to pick the firmware for the receiver or goggles that you're updating. That firmware will be in a zip file and you should extract the contents of the zip file to the root of the micro SD card. The receiver firmware will consist of several files and you need to make sure that you have all of those files in the root directory of the card. You should also make sure that these are the only files in the root directory, although it's fine to have DVR footage in the subfolders. Once that's done, remove the micro SD card from your computer. Before you update the receiver, make sure you have a fully charged battery in your goggles. If the battery dies during the firmware update, the receiver may be left in a bricked state. You can recover it from this state, but it's easier to not have to, so just make sure your battery's charged. When you're ready, insert the micro SD card into the receiver and power the receiver and goggles on. You should see a progress bar on the screen for the firmware update process. This can take several minutes for the receiver update, so be patient and just check on the progress occasionally. When it is complete, you'll see a message that the update was successful and you can power off the receiver at that point. Now you're ready to move on to the VTX. You always want the VTX firmware to match the receiver firmware version, so you'll want to update your VTX firmware anytime you update the receiver firmware. Fortunately, this is pretty fast. You'll need to load the VTX firmware onto the receiver's micro SD card, so go ahead and put that into the computer. You'll again want to make sure that you locate the correct firmware file for your VTX model. It's really important to get this right because you could damage the VTX if you load the wrong type of firmware onto it. Just like before, you should extract the contents of the zip file into the root directory of the micro SD card. In this case, it will probably only be one file. Make sure it's the only file in the root directory of the card. Then you can take the card out of your computer and put it back into the receiver. Now you'll need the firmware update cable that came with your receiver or goggles. You should plug one end into the firmware update port on the VTX and the other end into the firmware update port on the receiver. You won't need to have your drone powered up during this process because the receiver will supply power to the VTX during the update. Once you have everything connected and have the SD card inserted in the receiver, you can power up the receiver and your goggles to start the update. You'll see a progress bar again, but this one should be very fast. When the update is complete, you'll see a message on the screen. You can power off the goggles and receiver at that point and disconnect the firmware update cable. This completes the VTX firmware update process. If you're updating multiple HD0 VTXs, you'll need to re-add the VTX firmware to the card each time because it gets deleted from the card after the firmware update. There is a way to prevent the file from getting deleted, but you'll want to be careful to only use this if you're updating the same type of VTX over and over. Remember that you don't want to try to update a VTX with the wrong version of the firmware. To keep the firmware file from getting removed from the card after the update, create a blank text file with the name do not remove.txt and put it in the root directory of the SD card. Use this power wisely. That's all there is to it, and after following this process, you should have the latest version of the firmware on your HD0 receiver and VTX. I hope you found this guide helpful, and if you did, make sure to check out the rest of the videos in this series for more information on using HD0.